living on the edge that's right we got a 2008 i believe a ford edge 3.5 liter i think it's an eco boost i'll have to check the paperwork customer states replace serpentine belts does the key work i have the wrong key oh no totally the wrong key this one's for an escape i don't need this okay, let's try again we'll put that one here we'll trade it out for whoa did you see that i just moved through the matrix trade it for this key see if this is the right one and uh survey says yeah, I've heard the horn honk. Should be. All right. Anyway, as I was saying before I rudely interrupted myself, customer states replace serpentine belts. There are two of them. There's a, like a water pump alternator belt, and the other one is a power steering belt. Starting the engine. The vehicle has approximately 81,492.1 miles on the odometer. Now, when it comes to those belts, I took a look at, uh, at the ordering guide, and I found that one of them is a stretch belt. And that means it does not have a tensioner, like a manual tensioner, or an automatic tensioner, and it just stretches to go over the pulley. I might be able to replace it without a tool, and I may have to order a tool. So this is either going to be a really easy job with some hard parts, or it's going to be a hard job with one easy part. One of the belts, like I said, has a, uh, has a tensioner, and the other belt does not. So let's get into the shop. Uh, we'll throw it up on a rack pull the wheel off I think I've got to go into the fender well we'll pull one of the wheels and uh, get the belts removed and see what we're working with so stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video opening Z hood Parking the auto. Let's go ahead and pew, power this unit down and see what we've got going on here. I would like to pop the hood. There it is. Found it. Clickage. Hood poppages. All right, Ferd. Show me what we've got to work with in here. Definitely looks like a 3.5. I don't think that's an eco boost in there. I'm not really certain. Yeah, no, no, no. There's no eco boost. I don't see any uh, charge air pipes or uh, things of that nature, right? Yeah, that's a coolant hose, coolant hose. No, there's no charge air or turbines here, so this is a non-eco boost. All right, let's apply some illumination uh, down below, and I can see one belt right there, and behind it on the crank pulley, I can see the second belt. There's our tensioner right up front, and it looks like we're getting after most of this from down below. So uh, let's go ahead and get the rack set up. We'll pull the front wheel off, we'll pull the covers and everything off of the fender well, and then we can get some access to the front of the engine. Okie dokes, the rack is set. I spared you guys the agonizing uh, experience of setting the rack and rolling around on the floors. Moving on up. There we go, looking good. Let's give it a shake real quick, make sure it doesn't fall off. I won't spare you guys the safety section. Black subscribe button. Let's get this up to a good working height so I can sit in my chair. We'll pull the wheel off and then get the covers off. Beginning wheel removal procedure now. Unclickages. Dude, does this thing have swollen nuts? It's kind of a tight squeeze on the socket there. It may, not, it may be suffering from uh, forward swollen nut syndrome. That's where you get rust between the chrome cap and the steel insert inside of the cap. What'll happen is that it'll rust up in between those two surfaces, then the rust will expand and push the chrome out. Then you can't get a socket on it, and that's just silly. All right, looks like the inner fender well is coming out. It has been secured with some push clips. They're two piece clips, and we're gonna try to get these guys out without breaking them. So, there goes the one piece, and there's the second piece. The way these guys work is they fit into their hole, and then once you push the insert all the way down, it'll expand the outer section of the of piece number one, and then lock the clip into position. They're kind of good, but sometimes they'll get full of sand or dirt or whatever, and they're really hard to come apart on occasion, in which case you have to break them and then replace them. There we go. These ones happen to be coming out, coming apart with no problem. But we're gonna pull this inner fender liner out. 
Oh, let's see, I'm gonna need some sockets. There's a few, looks like six or seven millimeter fasteners, or maybe I can just kind of fold this up and out of the way, maybe. Mm, yeah, I could probably try that. I mean, we can see what's going on in there, right? Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just bungee cord this thing out of the way. We should be good to go. All right, bungee cord coming in. Let's just get a hold of that little loop right there. We'll tuck this thing aside and I'll connect the other side of the bungee to like the hood latch or something. Or perhaps I'll connect it right here to that little radiator support thing. There we go. Dude. Okay, let's maneuver ourselves up into this little hole here and see what we're looking at. So there's our tensioner. It says foam go on it, that's the forward part. That is the belt that uh, is not the stretch belt. It's the primary serpentine belt. But this one over here, that's the power steering belt and that is a stretch belt. So we have to cut that thing off and then get it on mostly. You no, know, we're supposed to use a tool over here to, uh, to hold it to the pulley. And then we'll have to rotate the crank pulley in order to uh, stretch that belt onto the other pulley. So that's gonna be the hard one. I'm gonna try to do it without the tool. If I have to order the tool, then I have to order the tool and that's the way it is. But we'll see if I can't get away without uh, uh, actually purchasing that special tool to uh, accomplish this job. So first things first, uh, I need to go back up top, untension that tensioner because I saw the, uh, the hole that connects to the ratchet was at the top side. So let's get a hold of that thing first, get this one off, and then we can cut this stretch belt off and then attempt to get the new one on. Uh, the two belts have been ordered. They're not here yet, but I expect them to be here uh, any moment. So hopefully they'll show up while we're working on that front belt. So let's get this thing back down a little bit and we will untension that primary belt tensioner and uh, get going on this particular project. I'm hoping it comes along quite swimmingly and uh, it's not gonna be a headache. I've already had a couple headaches today and I don't want to have any more. Show. Sure. That's a tight squeeze too. Holy smokes. Look at that down there. I don't even know if I can get a ratchet onto that guy. What is that? 3 8 sized? I think I've got a low pro 3 8 Let me try that. Let's see. Let's see. There it is. Low pro 3 8 drive ratchet. See how super thin that is? It's good for those hard to reach places. All right, so down, down we go. Slip that thing in. And I think, okay, it's on, that's good. So what I need to do now is just put like a cheater bar over top of this. We'll give it a good tug and that should release tension uh, on that belt. There we go. Now, when I said cheater bar, what I meant was part of the handle for one of the floor jacks. Those are very good breaker bars as long as you don't destroy them. Come here, there we go. Slide that thing right over top of the ratchet, giving us plenty of leverage. Make this job real nice and easy like. Oh, I said that and I shouldn't have. Fingers crossed. It's either gonna work or, or it's not. So give that thing a tug. Pull, 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 okay. Looks like the tensioner has been released. Hey, check this out. So I, I snuck it past this AC line and it's kind of just, uh, holding position right here. That's cool. Very fortunate. So now I can just come on down and pull that guy right off. There we go. Beautiful. Let's release the tension on the tensioner. Slide that guy forward again. There we go. And I can leave this thing right here. Come back and get it later. There's uh, really no need to remove the tool and the cheater bar since it's not in the way. Let's go ahead and run this thing back up. Moving on up, black subscribe button. It's what we do here. There we go. See, I'm not really in the camp of doing the traditional YouTube thing going, hey, smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe and comment, blah, 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 blah. I like to do that a little bit more passively. So uh, my version was just putting a sticker on the button. I thought it was cute. I don't know if it works or not. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Anyway, all right, looking right up here at that alternator. I know it's a tight squeeze. The belt is going over top that nader pulley. Let's just pull that guy down and maneuver it out from that AC compressor. There we go. And belt number one 
has been removed. Here, let's just zoom right on in for some closer inspection of this belt right here. We can see it's got some very small cracks and a couple larger cracks. See that right there? That is no bueno. That's not what we want. I mean, yeah, it's not at a critical failure point as of yet, but we are uh, we're fast approaching the point where these cracks are going to become very large and potentially cause the belt to break. Hmm, what was that rocks in there? Oh, there's another big old crack. Look at that one right there. Yep. Now, see, these are hard to see when the belt's in its normal position, but if you were to take this thing and give it a flip and then bend it the opposite way, they really start to open up. See that? Okay. Well, that's enough for me. That one's junk. Next, time for the removal of the stretch belt. Okay, we reached the point of almost no return. We need to remove this stretch belt. Now, stretch belt removal is super duper easy. It's the, uh, the installation part that'll get you every time. So all we gotta do is get in there, just cut this guy off. We're committed now, it's over with. Goodbye, stretch belt. Ping, it has released. Where'd it go? Hang on, it's in there somewhere, let me find it. It went up there, I see you. Let's pull that guy out for some closer inspection. There we go. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here. Yeah, this one is in a very similar condition as the primary belt. A couple little cracks, nothing horrible. Yeah, it is starting to come apart just a little bit. There's a few cracks in it. Is that a crack? What is that? Yep, yeah, there we go. Let's give it some zoom action. A little bit closer, a little closer, we can see it. Yeah, nothing crazy, but it is starting to come apart. So good preventative maintenance item. On this particular Ford. Okay, waiting game, I need some parts. All right, it is the next day we return. I have some belts, so let's get back on this stretch belt application. See it right there, look, it even says in the belt, stretch fit belt. So uh, let me get this thing maneuvered in. Now what we're gonna find here is that the crankshaft has two belt lands. There's a larger diameter and there's a smaller diameter. So we need to get this thing on the crank first and slip that behind the large diameter. Uh-oh, my letters and numbers are facing the wrong way. Let me flip this around. I'm weird like that. You guys saw it in an earlier video. I like it when the letters point towards the front of the engine. Now, what has to happen here is we need to get this belt wrapped mostly around that pulley. Then we're gonna have to rotate and turn the crankshaft pulley in order to force the belt and stretch it onto the uh, power steering pulley. Now, as we can see, there's not much space in there and, and I'm gonna try real hard to just hold on to this belt and hopefully the finger, the force of my finger, words, will be enough to generate the friction to walk this thing around as I turn the crank. It might work and it might not. I know you guys can't see way up in there and I can feel it and it's starting to slip off. That's, that's not working out. So I need to come up with another plan here. I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I got an idea. I've done this on some Chevrolets. Be right back. All right, I've got a new plan here and it involves a wire coat hanger. Check this out. What I need is this piece of a uh, piece of wire here. We're gonna snip this off the coat hanger. So I get one long straight piece of wire. Do that. And I'm gonna make the tool that holds on to this. I've done this before and it was effective last time, so I'm gonna try it again. We're gonna wrap that coat hanger around. Whoa! Didn't mean to do that. We're gonna go through this pulley, wrap it around and use this to kind of hang on to the belt as, uh, as we rotate that crank to draw the belt through. Let me get some more wire here. Let's pull it through. This might work, it might not. Again, if it doesn't work, then uh, I'm gonna have to buy the tool. 
but the problem is is that tool is like far away and nobody has one available so I'm gonna try this without the actual tool you know that so now I'm gonna go in with these needle noses and I'm gonna give a twist to this wire to take up some of the space and I'm gonna cut off some of the excess we don't need all this extra wire Kind of getting in the way. Cut that out. We'll cut that one out right there. So we're effectively hard wiring the belt to the pulley. Let's see if it works. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It kind of has to. Um, I don't have a boatload of options on how to get this thing on. So I must rely on some ingenuity. It's getting kind of ugly looking in there. If I had some more space to manipulate things, I could make this a little prettier. But I don't. A couple twists in it. Come on, little we'll couple more twists. Let's make it tight. Yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. That's cooking with Crisco. The more I twist it, the more the wire is being taken up in the twist, and the tighter it's getting around the pulley and around the belt. Can you guys see that up there? We're getting pretty close. So now, I want to get the belt back around the crank over here. We'll see if this is going to be enough to walk that bell around our power steering pulley. See that? Let's send it, see what happens. Okay, here goes nothing. Let's see what happens here. I know you guys can't really see in great detail, my hands are in the way, but as soon as that wire passes around the top where that belt is separating from the pulley, it should start to pull it in and walk it onto the grooves. Should. In theory, this is exactly what the actual tool does. It's just a little cleaner of a look, I suppose. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let me take a look up there. Looks like it's starting to work. Let's keep going, see what happens. Getting hard to turn, I can tell you that. Come on, belt. Oh, baby, go, yeah, it's gonna work. This is working. And she's on. See that? The wire's got it captured. It's on. It is over all the grooves. Success. Now I just need to go in there, snip that wire. Release. Release now. Got it. And I can pull the wire section out. Come here, tool. Um, here tool got it there we go that is one belt stretch fit installed without the tool we'll give it a couple more turns just make sure it's good I like it very nice all right let's back it up and get the easy belt on we're good to go here let's go, uh, back under the hood of this form and we will uh, untension that tensioner and then slip that belt over that alternator. I think that's the way we've got to do it. Or, oh, I know, I'll do, I'll do what I did last time. We'll just untension it and kind of lock it in. It'll stay put if it's wedged against that. There we go. That's how I took it apart. 
I remember now. Now I know. Because I can't reach that thing from uh from the top because there's all this stuff in the way. And I can't even see that alternator pulley up here. Let alone reach it. Okay. Let's go back down below real quick. And get this thing set up. Rambles. Miscellaneous rambles over with. Alright, going back in again. Let's go get that thing up and over the nader. A lot of feeling it. Can't really see much, but we can feel it. Well, I can feel it, and then I can tell you what it feels like. So that one's that one's on on the alternator. The uh, AC compressor's on. Idler is on. Retentioner. And here it goes. The crank pulley. So we're good here. That's all set up. See it right there? It's good on the other side. Okay. Now I can untension that tensioning uh, device there. And we should be all set. Move it over. Push it forward. Recover the bar. There we go. And I think I can reach down in there and get a hold of... Uh... There it is. A ratchet. There we go. So now we've got both belts installed those are all set beautiful i like it that was easier than i thought it was going to be but it could have gone a lot worse so now we can put this back oh by the way i did not have this thing bungee corded overnight i didn't want it to like take form and then always be folded in so i did disconnect it uh last night you guys didn't see that because i edited go plug that one in push pins for the wind Let's see there's another one down there and there uh, one more there it is up top all right one two three four I don't see any more holes for push pins good to go all righty wheel going back on let us get this thing bolted in and torqued and then we can restart things the auto and uh Make sure those belts don't make noises and whatnot. Get on there, studs. Okay. Got our five lugs right here. Our lumens again do some double checks can't see much looking good no tools beautiful that's us restarting the engine we're gonna be looking for some squeaks belts flying off and destroying stuff you know just want to make sure it's right and uh we believe we're good to go here i like it belts running good i can see all the pulleys Turn on the AC and put a load on that belt and just make sure AC on. Continue. Come on, AC. There you go. AC on, recirculate. Making cold. Let's check the compressor. Compressor's running. I can see the clutch down there. And looks like belts are running straight and true. Same thing with that power steering in the back. We're all good to go here. Boom to bar. All right, guys, that's going to complete all of our repair operations on this particular Ford at this time. Nice, quick, easy, fast job. No headaches, no special tools required. That's a win as far as I'm concerned. So, that being said, I have nothing more to do here except for close this video out and back this car out. And I will do that first by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And 
most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Into Ford, into Serpentine Belts, into Stretch Built Fit application without a special uh, tool to do it with, into video, into transmission.